Guess who's back? In black. In the black. In the moving around black. The steady cam has come back. It's in black. Yeah. Um, so, today I walked uh, from Unas Alas, or whatever it's called, to Ale. <coughs> I've really like looked a map when I'm talking about name places and names. To Ale's Jura hut, which is where I am now. Hooray! Look, you can't really see anything apart from me. Uh, but, you know, it's a hut. And there is hut things behind me. In fact, there's a, there's a fire behind me. Um, or at least, well, a stove. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so today was, like, the most difficult, most challenging day yet. Uh, I... It was 14 kilometres, um, so I walked up onto the top, basically crossing a ridge into another valley system, um, but not necessarily the easiest way. Um, but it's a well-marked -mar snowmobile track, um, so I was just following the red crosses, and it was a beautiful day, so there was lots of beautifulness to look over. Um, Yep. <coughs> so, headed off up the hill, saying, waving goodbye to the wonderfully cool German family, um, families, um, and then it got snowy. Um, well, it didn't get snowy, it was snowy. So I walked through the snow, and I'm prepared for snow. And I was prepared for it to be cold. Um, and then... It, part of the, the last... The, the, the most difficult part of the uh, ridge is kind of going through a pass, which is like at 1,200 <coughs> metres or something. Um, now, the difficult bit isn't really the height, um, and it isn't really that it's particularly... Um, it's not particularly poor weather, but being in the pass, it's clearly had lots of wind channeled through it. And so on the side that I was approaching from, there was lots of very deep drifted snow. So it was incredibly hard going walking up this kind of, just like 300 metres up to uh, wherever I was going, like into this pass. And then walking through it was again quite deep snow and I have a walking stick and an ice axe, but you know, neither of them particularly stop you sinking into snow and make make it less painful just to walk uh, through the snow. So that was quite tiring, but uh, I did it, I did it, and that's the important thing. Um, I just steamed through it, um, and it, I probably could have set off earlier today, um, I maybe set off about, yeah, late, I, I can't remember, but late, late, a lot late, later than I could have done, um, but I got here to this hut in just about the twilight, um, so that was okay, the hut's a bit interesting, um, like, there's a gas stove, but the gas doesn't work, so you have to, like, cook on the stove itself. But there's a fire alarm, so you can't take the, like, part of the stove apart, so you can, like, properly heat stuff. You have to, like, just sit it on the top. So, that's inter <coughs> interesting. Um, <coughs> my meth um, bottle has decided to explode or leak again, which has been just great. Um, just wonderful. Oh, I saw some interesting tracks in the snow. Um, I've taken some photos. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that they're bear tracks, but chances are they're probably some, like, large mountain dog that's 
herding reindeer or something exceedingly dull. <clears throat> I mean, that's an interesting point, actually, because um, a lot of people ask me, you know, aren't you scared going on your own? Um, isn't it dangerous? And, you know, it's a fair question. Um, it is a bit dangerous. Uh, that's life. Um, you know, it's dangerous every time you try and cross a road. Um, stuff could happen at any moment, you know, I could... When, when there's nobody around to help, lots of things don't happen that they can happen when there are people to help. But at the same time, there are lots of things I don't have to worry about here in the mountains, like theft. Um, if there are no people, there's nobody to steal your stuff. If there are no people, there's no one to hurt you. Um, if there are no people, there are no loud drunk people who you can't predict what they're going to do. And so you have to assume the worst. So, whilst uh, whilst there are you know dangers, if I fall and hurt myself, then I have to get myself to uh, one of these huts with the emergency telephones. But you know, <coughs> let's face it, people have done incredibly amazing things with. I mean, just think, kind of say. Uh, Touching the Void 100 or 127 hours. Um, you know, people can self-rescue quite, quite impressively. And those are very extreme examples. Say if I was to just, you know, the classic one is, you know, oh, Tim, you're going to, like, twist your ankle and not be able to walk. Okay, so... Um, right, so, like, you mean I'm going to have to get myself to the hut, nearest hut and call for help because that's pretty much what I'd have to do wherever I was um, because really it's no different particularly being here or or say anywhere in the Lake District or anything it's, it's, it's just about common sense and taking calculated risks and <laughs> uh, <laughs> <coughs> yes, things like bears are risks that are calculated as being quite laughable. Um, there are no risks from bears, um, or at least <laughs> yes. I mean, there's, there's there's probably a better risk of me winning the lottery than there is of uh, me having a negative encounter with a bear. Um, which would be quite awesome. I'd hey, just think about the footage. It would be like some of the best video ever. Uh, maybe not the kind of crunching through the bones, but like the me scaring it away, and then like attacking it with a penknife, uh, and then eating it, and then 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 the crunching through the bones might get to you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I don't really see particularly what there is to be scared about. Um, <laughs> you know, I maybe it's just me, and maybe I just get an inordinate amount of enjoyment from trying to work out what actually there is to be scared of. But really, really, there isn't anything. Um, stuff might happen. Stuff might happen anywhere. You don't worry about it when you're walking down the street, so why worry about it here? It's just about common sense. <coughs> On the other hand, this cold is, like, really annoying, so it can die. Um, <laughs> um, yes. So, tomorrow is the last day on this food cycle. So I have two bags of food, um, both pretty much containing the same kinds of things. Um, and tomorrow is my last day of this bag. And after that, it all onto the new bag, which means, means pretty much right now it's massive feast time. Um, I've just had 
a lot of spaghetti. Um, so that's good. And a lot of cheese. So that's good. Um, yeah. Is there anything else interesting to mention? It was interesting to see what the German family were eating. You know, I, when I walked in, they were eating omelettes. And I assumed an omelette. And I assumed that, you know, they'd brought raw eggs with them. You know, it's, it seems unlikely. <coughs> unlikely, but... Unlikely things happen and you just accept them. Um, it turns out everything they were eating was kind of cooked in the bag. Bad, bad just add hot water cook in the bag uh, so uh, I was kind of I, apparently they were quite impressed that I'd brought spaghetti and uh, cheese and like tomato sauce uh, or in my case tomato puree double concentration um, from Aldi um, but you know it, it seems to work for them and it seems to work for me so, that's fine. <sighs> yeah, today I got back, got to the, this hut quite late. I mean, that's going to be one of the longest days that I've done, really. Um, I don't know what time I arrived, but it must have been like 7pm or something. And the light was just going. Um, I just kind of got my head torch out about half a kilometre before, so that I could avoid treading in mud. And yes, I have about seven more days of walking left, so tomorrow I'll probably head down this big valley to somewhere, and then I'll look at the map. Um, I've got a few ideas, but I don't want to commit myself right now, um, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. Bye!